Hello, I'm Tom McGowan. Here in the entryway to the home, you'll notice the plentiful sunlight and spacious foyer, an elegant entrance to any dwelling. As we walk through into the house, it opens up into a beautiful suburban rumpus room. You'll spend hours in the cozy, warm space with your family. There's plenty of room for entertainment, large, comfortable couches, and an exciting, leading-edge home entertainment system. Your friends will love spending time with you in this room. They'll sit on your couch for hours, providing you with the love and support you require to grow and mature as a human being. And here, on this plush Burberry carpet, you'll find the former owner of this beautiful home with his face against this modern contemporary floor covering. He will finally find the eternal peace and rest that he sought after, as you and your family will too. Although these stylish furnishings brought no solace to him, the Cutting Edge Entertainment Center brought him no distraction. You'll find that his struggle against the twin emissaries of doom known simply as Trantolo and Trantolo will bring you rest and relief in your calm, serene living room. A catharsis knowing that there is forever a document of one who dedicated himself to an obsession with them. Perhaps the story would have ended a little differently if our homeowner had simply stepped through the living room into this resplendent sunroom where you can take in the panorama of the spacious, verdant backyard and patio. And I forgot the name of the show. But I just remembered it. Now you're on to something. Hello and welcome to Now You're Onto Something, a game show where we ask our, pa our distinguished panelists questions in order to reach deep prophetic answers. Um, our first guest is Tom McGowan, um, actor and real estate agent. Um, recently he's, he, had a, he had a role in a movie with Kate Winslet. Could you talk to us about that? Sure. Uh, it's a small little role, and I played a um, delivery room doctor, and I deliver her baby in the movie. So it was a it was a good experience, and it just sort of happened. It evolved into it. They called and asked me to audition, and I said, no, I'm not going to drive that far to audition. And they said, would your wife shoot you on the iPhone, and you could send that? And I said, yes. And so then they liked it and called me in, and the director saw me, and I read for it, and then did it. So I was, it was nice. It was nice to do. Wow. Talk about technology. To, yeah. Yeah. The iPhone. Every casting director should do that. Every casting director. Wow. And uh, you also told me that you were on um, 30 Rock, a yes. show many, many of our viewers might know of. Uh, what, did you, what did you play? I played on that an evil congressman who was uh, dishonest and not nice. And I like playing those roles. <laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> I actually, I haven't seen that exact episode, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep an eye on it for that. Um, and right now, you, you mainly do real estate. And I mainly do real estate, but I'm starting to produce also. So I'm going to be producing uh, informational videos, and then actually this year I'm planning on shooting a movie. Oh, so, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, keep a lookout for that. Yeah. Right. Our next guest is uh, Mike Dampus, uh, enthusiastic gamer and fanatic blogger. Right, right, yeah. Um, tell us about the games that you play. Uh, I like to play, you know, old games usually, but like I usually have a rule of thumb, you know, if they're made before I was born, they're pretty good. And otherwise, I judge them harshly. When were, when were you born? 89. 89. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So uh, you have some old games that you like to oh, play. Oh, yeah, like the uh, Mario Brothers. Uh huh. Oh, very good. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, and I, I know you, you're a blogger. Oh, yeah. I, I have a blog called Walking the Blog, uh -huh. where I oh. go around town, uh, and I just talk to do people who are walking their dogs, uh -huh. and I judge them on how well their dog is. 
okay. I pet the dog, and then I go back and blog about it. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I thought that I thought we had to do about video games, but oh no, that, that's okay. Um. Uh. Well. There's no better time than the present, so uh, let's start the game show. We're, we have a series of questions, and um, the panels will discuss and trying to find, um, make a good point. And, and if they do make a good point, we'll, uh, we'll do a little something like this and say, now you're onto something. So, um, our first question will have to do with media and reality TV shows. Uh, in particular, how real are they? To what extent are reality TV shows an example of reality? So um, I'll pose the question off to you. Okay, well, I feel that they're pretty real, getting the title reality TV. I mean, it's hard to not, like, you'd have to, like, give your whatever credentials to the TV company and be like, wow, this is reality. So I'm going to put that um, in the title. Reality TV. Grammatically, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Um, what do you, how do you feel about this? Well, I think to put it politely, they're just a load of crap. <laughs> I mean, um, they're rehearsed, most of them. And, uh, you know, there are different programs on where people go and buy antiques and things like that. And they go up to the door and, and the lady or gentleman, uh, woman answers the door and they're like, oh, I've seen you on TV. And it's like, well, and then you do a reverse camera shot and it's, how did they get that camera shot if it's all brand new, it's all spontaneous. So, you know, it's just another way to uh, make money, which is, is great, <laughs> but... That was very observant. You're, yeah, you are correct. Because I see reality shows, and yes, there are, like, how, how do they have that many cameras in, in the room? You know, like, like they have, maybe something like Big Brother might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's cameras everywhere. But then you have something like, uh, where they're following, they're following the, the, the whatever protagonist who's, like, angry, they just got in a fight, fist fight or something, they're following with the camera down the hallway. How real can that be? Oh. I mean... Sometimes I follow like my sister down the hallway with a camera, just like asking her like, "Did you brush your teeth today?" And she'll be like, uh, "Why are you doing this again?" And I feel that's pretty real. So, I'm sorry, you're not onto something. Uh, um, and Tom has, has has come out on top. Um, we'll move on to our next question. This is uh, well in the in the in the news we've. Uh, Heard, well, we had a huge election recently. We had uh, President Obama was reelected. Um, we were, but also important was uh, the question of legalization of marijuana, and um, particularly Washington State and Colorado. Now, I've heard a lot of um, questions back and forth whether this is a bad idea. It could it could really hurt society. You know, uh, it's a gateway drug. Um, and at the same time, uh, federally, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a class one drug. Basically, it's completely illegal. There's no medicinal benefits to it. So this is a two-part question. One, do you think marijuana does pose a threat to society? And two, do you, what do you think the federal uh, response should be to uh, these new laws? I'll pose a question to Tom. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I, th I think that uh, it's not necessarily a gateway drug. Um, I think that, uh, you know, no more than wearing plaid pants or something is a gateway to decorating or something. It's, it's just not a reality. And I, I think that ultimately, where we're going as a as a country, as a people, it, it is what it is, and that's where it's going. I mean, it's it's just the way it is today, and it's time that the rest of the population catches up with what is. It's not it's not going to change. It's already there. So I live I've lived all over the country. It's it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And what I find is interesting nowadays: more people 
are, that are older are doing it. Oh. Yeah, than when I was younger. And it, it's like that movie, Little Miss Sunshine, mm -hmm. where Alan Arkin says to the grandson, he said, don't do drugs. And I agree with that. Don't do drugs when you're young. Um, have a lot of sex, but don't do drugs. You do drugs when you're old. You're onto something, yes. Yeah, um, that's when you need them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I do it. I'm yeah. just saying I might in two years. Yeah. And in the autumn years of life. Yeah, it, it gets a little tough, the whole death and sickness thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and what, is your, uh, what do you think the, the government should do about it? Just, just let, leave these states alone? Well, they're ultimately going to figure out how to make money through taxation, so they mm -hmm. might as well just figure it out and get it over with and start making money. Mm -hmm. Get rid of mm -hmm. the deficit. I swear, it'll be gone in a couple of years. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Um, you are definitely on to something. Thank you. Um, Mike? Uh, I agree with Tom with the old get over it and let's make some money, but at the same time, being an avid blogger, I read my friend's uh, 420 blog, and he talked about how oh, there's no like scientific problems with like whatever, whatever you guys call it, your marijuana. Mm -hmm. But I feel we should more emphasis not on the people but on the dogs, because like I said, I go around pet a lot of dogs. So they're very stressed out. Like people take times out of their day to pet them. They're very stressed out. Like roll a blunt for your dog. Are you advocating for? Um Medicinal marijuana for, for dogs. For canines. Yeah. Oh, for canines. I, that's brilliant. Yeah. That is very, yes. you are onto something. You that's really, really are. Put it in the dog food. <laughs> exactly. And then they could just sit there enjoying their day being pet. Well, i the light bulb has gone out. Now you're onto something, <laughs> but we're gonna have one bulb for for both people. That sounds fair. So. Um, that's a very good idea. Uh, canines do get stressed out. Um, they are very much like people. And um, I do know that uh, veterinarians do prescribe Xanax and other benzodiazepines to, uh, to canines that are, that are particularly wired. So, so uh, to extend that to marijuana, um, when uh, you know, recently in Connecticut there was a medical marijuana bill passed. Uh, very interesting, very interesting, very interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Let's move on to a, a third question. Um, something I, I, I I'm stuck on this marijuana question now. I'm like, you know, I, I, that dog the dog thing has really got me. Um, it's it's touching. We, it's very it, it is. They're mm -hmm. such an important part of our lives. Like mm -hmm. we should well, help them out. I, I used to raise dogs, my wife and I did, and I have to say that, you know, I, I agree with that. But now, I, as I think about it, it's not just dogs, it's cats, it's... Oh, yeah, anything. Really. You know, a duck, if you had a pet duck, anything like that. Oh, I yeah. think marijuana should be legal for all animal pets. Now, as far as, you know, for domestication, if you're a meat eater, or I, I don't know about that, or maybe feeding the fish. Yeah, fish or whatever. You know, it, it might be good for, across the board. Yeah. Definitely. And the robins might stay all winter if they had it too. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Serious questions. Yeah. Requires yeah. serious answers. <laughs> yeah. Technologically, well, when it comes to uh, dispensing medicinal marijuana to animals, I think we're kind of in the stone ages at, the, at this point. But um, I really like that, that point. Um, uh, uh, well, we, we kind of got stuck on this question. Um, we're going to have to address it in the future. This is, uh, I thought this was very enlightening. I thought we had a very enlightening show. And I'd like to thank both of our guests for their, their opinions. Um, I, have to, I have to give the, give the game to Tom. He, uh, he talked oh, less I about dogs. Oh, I can't believe it. It was well played. He deserves yeah. it. Yeah, it was very good. Oh, gosh. Thank you. No. Thank you so much. This is, this is why I do this. This is very good. I can understand. Oh, God love you. <laughs> oh, <look at> this. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. And this is, uh, and stay tuned for next episode of Now You're On to Something. Yeah. Now thank You're On.
And we're back to now we're on to something. Um, where we left, last left off, uh, Tom was in the lead and we had just completed two questions. Um, we touched on med medicinal marijuana and well, that's, that was a really big point. Um, our next question is something a little, a little off the beaten path. Um, those who listen to Coast to Coast AM with uh, Art Bell or George Nor Nor Nori would be familiar with this question. But um, basically, to what extent is the government trying to control our thoughts? And what evidence do you have to support your opinion? I'm going to start with Tom. Um, well, just a minute. Let me get the answer. Oh, no, that was a joke. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think thoughts are controlled through the media right now. But that'll change, not in my lifetime, but probably in you guys' lifetime. I mean, not directly, but, but through coerce, coercion? Yes, yeah. I mean, it's everybody's programmed. I know in, in different entrepreneurial things that I'm involved in, you start to learn how they manipulate the masses and move them to buy this or to do that, or everybody has to have granite countertops and stainless steel, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like a whole, that's a thought control process. Mm -hmm. And it works, and it all has to do with money. So from that viewpoint, yeah, they, they do control our thoughts already. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because, uh, yeah, the more I, I look at advertising, you know, it's, it's, it, advertising as a as a as an industry is 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 incredible and um i was lucky enough to speak to someone that worked in the um, advertising industry and and the amount of psychology involved is is in sociology is is rather breathtaking so uh i can i can i can agree with that that um but more directly um uh, do you think there might be government technologies that could be Relaying messages into our brains. So. Oh, definitely. Like you look at microwaves nowadays. You're not supposed to stand so close to them because you know cancer or whatever. But really, it's because of the receptors on the uh, government hook up things. I don't want to get too into it because you know I did once and mm -hmm. they kind of. But you need to be standing away, so far away for like the optimal reception. And that's just microwaves. Like mm -hmm. refrigerators, they say they let out CO2, CF. 12 or whatever into the atmosphere. Those are really just, you know, the receptors that satellites in the orbit the atmosphere are collecting. So are you saying that um, purchasing uh, kitchen appliances and surrounding yourself with them is, is protecting you from government? No, it's what the government wants you to do. It goes hand in hand with the advertising you were oh, talking wow. about. Oh, wow. That is see. actually a very good point. That, that would be a very, very synergetic. Working together, wow. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, those are both interesting viewpoints. I think you, uh, you bring a good point with advertising. And Mike Davis over here brings a very good point with um, government receptors. Um, no, uh, I think that was a tie. I think that was, that was definitely a tie. So, oh, thank you. Uh, I, I, um, it, should, it should be. Yeah, so. Um, we might have to go into a tiebreaker, but uh, this last question, next question, um, it's going to be a little bit more personal than the last questions. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm asking both of you, if you had to live in another country, what would this country be and why? And please refer to your personal lives and experiences when answering this question. And uh, I'm going to have to, like, Ooh, take it. Another country, huh? I've always been fond of Greenland because of uh, how ironically it's not green and actually rather <laughs> icy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or subsequently Iceland because it's ironically not icy and rather green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one or the other, I, I guess Greenland because it's alphabetically first. Are you a fan of Bjork? I am, very much so. Okay. Um, tell me more about why, why you're personal, personally you feel a, a strong connection to either Iceland or Greenland? It's, uh, mostly because of uh, the false advertising they're giving, I guess. 
Hmm. You know, I like I like false advertising, mm-hmm. and I don't think their government's so into reading our minds. Hmm. I could be wrong. I could find out, and so everything uh, I think could be on the internet. So, but if it would, would it be Greenland or Iceland? Oh, I'm gonna go with Greenland. Very, very good. That's G. different because Iceland, you know, most people want to live in Iceland, but, yeah, but Greenland, that's props to you. Props to you. Now you're onto something. I would probably live in Finland, but I'm not being asked the question. Um, now, Tom. Yes. Where would you, what country would you live in and why? Well, I would have to say Denmark. Mm. Um, no, I'm very much capitalist and I like things and I like money. Mm-hmm. Lots of money, mm-hmm. but Don't we all? yeah. But the reality of it is, it, it, as you get older, it doesn't. It's like, what was it all about? I mean, sex was better than money, and kids were better than money, and grad kids are better than money, and and uh, there's so much work you have to keep doing to keep up, and and to keep up appearances. And Denmark just seems to be, even though it's very socialistic. Um, Worry-free. They mm. have the happiest uh, population on the planet for a country, and mm. um, and it's just the pressure sometimes of trying to keep up, of trying to make money, and and just have things, things, bling, and all this. And mm-hmm. it's like sometimes you just have enough. So I'd like to go to Denmark. Excuse me. It's. I think I'm he, fine. It's very personal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah. No, but. Uh, Denmark is the happiest country, and I think that was the right answer. And <laughs> Tom is in the lead. Uh, all right. So, oh. Mike, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to we're going to have another question. Just you know, let's tighten this up a little bit. All right. Come on. Um, you know, I don't want to give this game away or anything, but um, I'm going to leave this up. Actually. This is, a, this is a, a, new, a new feature we're doing on this show, is that I want you both to come up with the question, uh, two questions, and then we'll see which one's better, and then we might ask, ask it on an upcoming show. So, um, put on your thinking caps. And, uh, let's give it a moment. Now, have you both had enough time to think of a question? I think I have. Okay. Go right ahead. All right. My first question is, what's the prize for winning again? Okay. All right. That's the first one. Do we need both right now? Uh, no. So hold off on your other one. No. Have you, have you had time to come up with a question? Uh, anything at all? Well, I guess I would say should uh, birth control be mandatory until you've taken courses and passed tests um, and you have to be 22, say, before you could reproduce and still pass these things because uh, I think that would solve a lot of other problems. So that would be my first question. So, so you, no sex before you're, you're 22? Oh, no, you can have all the sex you want. Just, just I believe don't in that. Get, just don't get pregnant? Yeah, don't get pregnant because so many people are ill-equipped to be parents, even when they're older. So if they do get pregnant, it, it, they broke a law? Or, or no, they, no, it would be mandatory birth control, uh, or, which I think they have already some way of turning things off, and uh, they don't get turned on again until you uh, are clear to do uh, so. I see, I see. Oh, that's a very good question. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, uh, let's flip this around a bit. Um, go back to more conventional style. I'll ask, I'll ask a new question. Um, concerning birth control, I guess. And actually, uh, we call it right to life. You know, uh, pro-lifers, pro-choice. They, they, they came up in the election again. Um, it was a big deal. Um, I remember Mitt Romney it was against abortion in all cases except rape and incest, and Paul Ryan was against even those. So, please state if you're pro-choice and pro-life and why, and where do you think the, um, 
Where do you think government policy, the, the social, America as a society should be heading in this direction? And um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, Tom? Well, um, I don't believe in abortion, period. And if you were pregnant, I mean, if you were a woman and you were pregnant and you came to me, I would counsel you against it at all odds. In the same token, I don't believe in legislation against it. Mm -hmm. So it puts me in a precarious position because I think that uh, you should have the right to choose what you want to do. I also think it's wrong to end uh, something that's alive, especially if the heart's beating. I think that that's definitely wrong. And I think that, again, that's why I believe that birth control should be mandatory. If you're not ready to have a baby, for God's sakes, don't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's just real simple. It's not a difficult thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. You know, a lot of people are in your position where, um, well, I won't get into that, but very quickly. Oh, well, I feel that I'm very pro choice until they can up. I, I'm going to bring this back to dogs. Because mm. so many people are depressed because they don't have a good dog. Because the dog population is too low while the human population still skyrockets. So if we can get the dog population and, and bring down the human population up to like an even even, so like every person has a good companion dog, I feel like right there would be optimal for everyone dog, people, cats. Hmm. Like, it sounds like it, that'd be a very big boom for the for the dog food oh, industry. Yeah. Well, are um, you a lobbyist by any chance? No. Well, well, let's leave it at that. We, well, it seems like we have more questions than answers on our show today, but um, clearly one answer is that Tom is our winner. Um, congratulations! Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, I should have threw my hat in after the Denmark. Mm -hmm. I knew I was done. Uh, well, there's always next time. You can always try again. I plan on it. Very good. And here we are at the prize ceremony at the end of our show. Um, if you're just tuning in, Tom McGowan has just won. And, and um, we're about to give him his prize of one cup of coffee. Oh, my God. I've always wanted this. <laughs> this is a... Starbucks? I can't believe that this is Starbucks. Yeah, it's a tall, and it's it? it's caffeinated. Yeah. Yes. Wow, I, I'm not allowed to have this, you know. Oh really? No, I have a heart condition. This will throw me right into AFib. Oh wow. Well, you only live once, and this is brought. I to actually you. love to be shocked. I'm sorry. <laughs>